Following in the footsteps of my other hack histories for major messaging apps comes the last of the big three, Telegram. It falls most in line with Signal's number of vulnerabilities and quick action to fix bugs, which makes sense given its pursuit of Goldilocks status as part mass market messenger, part security forward application, trying to beat both WhatsApp and Signal at their own games. In total, I was only able to find nine entries for Telegram, all of which will be included here. Links to sources are in the description. Similar to the last video on Signal, because Telegram is pretty solid when it comes to security, I'm far more inclusive than I was with WhatsApp's video. I couldn't even fit all the major vulnerabilities in that one, but for Signal and Telegram, I have room to mention slight oversights. With that, please don't get lost in the number of bullet points, but rather keep the whole picture in mind. Telegram has been instrumental in the Hong Kong protests that started in early 2019, offering both the security and the scalability needed when taking on Winnie the Ping. However, since users register with a phone number, there was a flaw that could allow authorities to add, say, 10,000 random phone numbers to a device's contacts, then sync it with Telegram, therefore allowing said authority to know which numbers did or didn't have Telegram accounts. Problematic when you're dealing with an authoritarian police force. While this affected every other app the same way, Telegram stepped up to fix it, adding a setting so a user's account and phone number can be matched only by the people that they have in their contacts. Telegram also increased their throttles on contact scanning, making it so numbers after the first couple hundred would take days and up to weeks or months to fetch results if done in mass. In February 2019, a bug was found that relied in part on Telegram's link preview generation. Using what the researcher refers to as a homograph attack, a hacker could type out a normal link, let the preview generate, then replace the link with some visually identical characters like in Cyrillic, and redirect the user to a malicious website that installs malware on their device. It was quickly patched. In July 2019, a security company called Symantec pointed out a theoretical flaw to intercept media messages sent by users in WhatsApp or Telegram and alter them. For Android users of said apps, only if there was also already specific malware on the device and with auto-downloading enabled for media, default in WhatsApp, voluntary in Telegram, the malware could fetch a media file and edit it in the brief buffer between when it's saved to the disk and when it appears in chat, replacing the intended media with the edited version either to maliciously redirect for personal gain or just to be a dick. There aren't any real-world examples of this, and it requires an already compromised device to even function, so take it with a few hundred grains of salt. Last September, it was discovered that deleting a photo for both sides would wipe it from the chat which is good. It wouldn't, however, wipe it from the recipient's phone, which is bad. The problem was addressed and promptly patched by changing the permissions that the app required from Android, netting the researcher a 2,500 euro bug bounty reward. In 2018, the same researcher discovered a bug that could leak the user's IP address during calls on Telegram desktop and Telegram's Android app. It relied on the peer-to-peer -peer settings for voice calls, which if set to everybody in Android would make the IP address vulnerable. If set to nobody, it was protected. Desktop didn't have a nobody setting at the time, so it was vulnerable regardless of the user's settings. The leak was sealed along with another 2,000 euro research reward. And a creative one from February 2018. Some languages read right to left. And when you combine both right to left and left to right languages in one text field, it's up to the program you're using to display them in their most logically legible fashion. This could be used to disguise a malicious file, with, say, a JavaScript extension to appear as a far more innocent PNG. In the case of the researchers, this became this exploiting the way Telegram processed Unicode and RLO characters. Why anybody would download a random image from someone they don't trust and run it, ignoring the warnings that Windows gives for JavaScript files is another question, but at this point I've realized that no amount of common sense is ever guaranteed.
One of the more well-known flaws is an exploit in 2017 that was discovered in both WhatsApp and Telegram. When a user opened a photo or video, it would redirect them to a malicious web page that would give the hacker control of the account. Except that's only how it worked on WhatsApp. Telegram's case was far more complicated as it only worked with videos and required the user to first open the video on Telegram web, only from within Chrome, and then for some reason right-click the video and also open it in a new tab? Computers. How do they work? But the flaw was there, and Telegram reported it fixed. In 2015, two researchers criticized the initial version of MT Proto, Telegram's encryption protocol for not achieving indis indis in indistinguishability under chosen ciphertext attacks. I don't 100% understand it either, I just barely got by in a BA program without dropping out, but the long and the short of it is that it had a rather serious vulnerability there. However, MT Proto 2.0, their update, fully satisfies the necessary conditions and has been verified by researchers as INDCCA secure. In 2013 and 2014, Telegram put up two high-reward contests for users who could crack their encryption and decipher one of their secret chats in total offering over half a million dollars. In almost every case, these contests are little more than a hollow publicity stunt to say, look, nobody could do it. But not here. A user found a theoretical man-in-the-middle vulnerability that could alter the visual key representations, which are displayed in-app for participants to confirm they have a secure encrypted connection, to make someone think they had a matching secure key even though they didn't. He got a huge $100,000 payout from Telegram kickstarting their bug bounty program. No one has shown a way to actually break Telegram's encryption yet, but you can be damn sure whoever could would be taking home one hell of a non-theoretical check. And there you have it. Concluding the series, I'd say the edge goes to Telegram, as they have had the fewest number of vulnerabilities, plus no loose threads like Signal's phone number privacy issue. Telegram has even gone above and beyond, putting in dev time to fix a potential exploit that affected an incredibly small percentage of its user base, but nonetheless they felt responsible to do so. They could have taken a page out of Signal's book and said, I guess you don't understand how these apps work, but instead redefined how these apps should work. Bravo, Telegram. Way to beat them at their own game.